Hi and welcome to the latest expert video series. Today we welcome Fiona Daly, Deputy Director of Estates for NHS England. Fiona is responsible for leading the strategies, the procedures, the policies for everything from operational resilience to patient experience and of course developing the 100,000 plus workforce in FM in the NHS hospitals today. Welcome Fiona, thank you for your time. Thanks, thanks for having me. Can we start off, Fiona, please, by telling us a little bit about the workforce plan? You talked about ICSs, yes. and I think we all, we're all waiting to see what that, that opportunity is, really, as they start to mature, uh, and they play more of a role in, in procurement and across FM. You also talk about one workforce yeah. related to ICSs in, in, in the plan. Kind of how far are we away from that actually becoming a reality? So... Um, ICSs are in their infancy, I think that's fair to say. All the ICSs are at, at different levels. So one of the things that we're doing is developing our ICS infrastructure strategies uh, and a core focus within those strategies will be the workforce. So looking at the workforce across the whole patch. Um, we need to have a think about how we attract people. Um, we've got a lot of high volume roles in, in the ICSs, how we get people in, how we offer training opportunities, how we become attractive as an employer. We need to look at um, attracting those people in very highly technically specialist roles as well and, and how we get through the, the kind of school age um, early enough to get people into STEM subjects and excited about STEM subjects. Um, and I think that those strategies will start to sort of see the skills at a, a, a more system level. So having a look at the skills that you need across a wider system, looking at whether you can make any uh, efficiencies. And I don't mind, mean by cutting jobs, I mean efficiencies in terms of has somebody got a very specific skill that you could use um, across a wider geography, which would give that person an opportunity to grow and develop, um, but also would, would offer the ICS something. Um, and then how do we really become interactive as an employer and as a local employer within those geographies um, and, and really seeing how we can dig into that because I think uh, attraction is really the key here so looking at what our real needs are how we develop people what what are we offering to people who come into the NHS I think that's where um, the ICSs are really going to come into their own um, I also think that we need to break down some of the barriers that we we've, we've got we are one workforce one NHS um, you guys at Sodexo, you, you know, and many, many other of our partners. We've got a whole bunch, a third of our workforce work in outsourced services or wholly owned subsidiaries, but we are one NHS workforce. So we're doing a lot around branding. Um, we're developing a national uniform, which we hope will sort of uh, make everybody feel part of the same estates and facilities community. Um, and that will be offered equally to our, to our FM partners as it will to our, to our in-house staff. And I think that that's really fundamental, sort of basic of building that up as we go forward. So Fiona, there's some great initiatives that are already starting to come out of the workforce plan. Uh, one that we're involved with is, is the Chef of the Year, which is a, a fantastic initiative. You talk me through uh, some other things that are going on uh, that people may not be aware of. Sure, um, and I could talk about Chef of the Year for, for a long time. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal um, uh, initiative and I would recommend that everybody has a look at that. Um, but yes, we're, we're doing a, a bunch of other stuff, a lot of things that I'm proud of actually. Um, last year we launched our apprenticeship challenge so uh, I think we've already touched on apprentices and you know they're going to be a big part of our workforce they're, they're a big part of the NHS long-term plan um, and we committed to trying to double the amount of apprenticeship starts in estates and facilities to 1,000 apprentices so we're well on our way to doing that um, we're waiting for the latest Eric data to see if we've hit the target but that's been a, a real kind of journey for us and we've not only looked at um, uh, new people coming into our workforce in terms of developing the next generation of our estates and facilities and um, stuff but we've looked at um, how we can use apprenticeships which you can do all the way up to degree level uh, and master's level to develop our own workforce so really making that kind of package available to people and that's something that I'm really proud of. Um, we've been working a lot uh, doing schools talks, so um, we've been out and about in schools, probably the most petrifying thing I've done for a long time, <laughs> talking to about 200 uh, school kids about a career in the NHS, but this is incredibly important, helping them to understand that there aren't just doctors and nurses in the NHS actually, 
it's a whole bunch of people and a whole bunch of careers uh, that people didn't really understand were there. And the apprenticeship route for, for a lot of these young people is really good uh, in terms of understanding how they, they can come in if they don't want to go to university. So that's really important. We've also been looking at improving the number of people who sign up as NHS ambassadors. So anybody can do that in the NHS. Um, sign up a, as an NHS ambassador. You can do it as a third party provider and any of your staff can as well. Um, and again, that's about getting out, talking of the NHS. Um, they ask you to commit one hour a year to, to going into a school um, and giving a talk uh, about what you do really. And I think that this is a, a phenomenal uh, initiative and something that we should all be really encouraging people to do. And probably finally, because I could talk for, for ages about all the initiatives, but um, <coughs> we're developing strategic partnerships. So we've got a partnership with Teen Tech, really exciting partnership. And Teen Tech are an organisation who take um, teenagers and really try and encourage them at the time when they're sort of usually stepping back mostly from STEM subjects to really dive in uh, and understand the world of tech. And I think that AI uh, and the digital agendas really help with that. But we're seeing lots more people who are really, really interested in a career in the NHS and now they're understanding that they can do that with STEM subjects, with engineering subjects, um, with management um, subjects within engineering as well, which is really exciting for us. Great. Let me just take you back to another element of the workforce plan and you talk about future-proofing the skills yeah. that exist within the FM teams and the estates teams. Can you share a little bit more about what those future skills are? What do, sure. what do you envisage we're going to need in the future? Well, I mean, I guess the first one that everybody will expect me to say is digital. Uh, digital and data, massive, massive transformation of our estate into the sort of the digital and data world. Um, uh, we're developing um, AI applications that we're testing with organisations and digital twins and it's very exciting the sort of potential of getting all of the data together and making it make sense to make our um, our systems uh, and, and our people um, safer, basically. But I think that uh, there are there are other aspects. I mean, I'll, I'll always mention net zero. Um, the green agenda is huge. We've got to be net zero by 2040. Uh, we're seeing climate change have an impact every day and more and more now. We need to look at how we adapt our estates and, and those skills are going to become more and more as we, we publish things like the, the net zero building standard. People need to understand that and what that means for building new buildings, but also operating new buildings and operating in new ways. But we also need to maintain some of the critical skills that we've got. We've got people who understand steam systems and you'll find very few graduated engineers who understand fully a steam system, but those systems are gonna be around for a while. So we need to look at how we retain and transfer some of that knowledge especially through things like our apprenticeship programs uh, to make sure that, that people understand that and we're developing those systems for the future so as we're transitioning people understand the old systems and the new systems so for heating for example you'd move off of steam maybe onto a heat pump yeah. um, so people will need to, to understand both of those um, for me data analytics is key that's going to be one of the key skills that we need within our workforce the ability to look at data, understand the data, gain insights from the data and then communicate it out to a broad brush of people. You talked about net zero, you talked about data. How much of those skills will you rely on third party partnerships with specialisms and the ability to scale and global reach? Yeah. Uh, of course I think about the investments that Dexo make in that kind of area and how much of that do you expect to attract talent within the NHS? Sure. So I think um, I think it's a bit a bit of both, isn't it? You know, um, organisations such as Sodexo, you have skills, uh, you have resources, you have scale, um, and we need to use those and we need to learn from those. And I think it's always a balance. So if I think about the net zero world, we know that to attract people into our workforce, people want to work for socially responsible organisations. So the NHS is a, is a big pull on the heartstrings, isn't it? And I think we all kind of work here for a, a slightly vocational uh, sense uh, as well as a, a professional sense. But I think that we're now seeing people are leaving universities, they won't work for organisations who kind of go up against their ethics. And so we need to adapt to that. We need to adapt to Generation Alpha, who are, who are the kids at school now, and they're going to be landing in the workforce in the sort of 2030s, who are digital natives. And they won't understand a pen and paper based system. So we need to, to sort of move away from that. But I think that 
we have the ability to develop and attract people and, and develop our own skills and develop our own people. Um, you guys have scale and knowledge and marketplace experience and the two need to work together to make sure that we're getting the, the best out of uh, the outcome. And the outcome is better buildings, safer environments for patients, making sure that patient outcomes are improved, making sure that we're not having a negative impact on the environment um, and making sure that people have you know really fulfilling purposeful work. I think that's a lovely way to finish that that sum up was was excellent and and certainly at yeah, Sodexo we look forward to continuing to play a part in that journey and, and helping the NHS wherever we can. Fiona thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you so much.